Hello! Welcome to my channel. My name is Jenna. I say welcome because I am just as new here as anybody else who is watching this. And if you can't tell by my very comfortable posture, I'm not nervous at all. So we cook here, or we're going to attempt to cook. We also threaten people. This is the second video I have filmed cooking, and it is the second time I have wielded a sharp object. I am helping nobody here. I promise this isn't a threatening channel. Despite the blue hair and the tattoos, we're breaking stereotypes and we're still using sharp objects to point. Not gonna happen. So, we're just gonna get started and I'm sure you've seen the title, but I'm gonna do an introduction anyway. You've heard of sweet potato french fries. You've heard of sweet potato tots. And we've heard of the regular versions of those things. But have you ever had a sweet potato hash brown patty? You know, like the kind that you get at the McDonald's? Also at the grocery store, you get those patties. You can hold them in your hand, you can run down the street with them. All that sort of thing, super convenient. All that sort of thing. <laughs> oh Lord. Anyway, um, but today we're gonna make sweet potato hash brown patties. <laughs> I found myself, I think I was driving, maybe I was falling asleep, I'm not sure, and thought, I've never seen a sweet potato hash brown patty. I've never seen one. I'm sure they exist if you Google them. Like, I found a couple of recipes, but we're making up our own. But I haven't seen it anywhere, and I've never consumed one. And I know it's still potatoes, just in a different shape, but pasta shapes taste different, so so do potatoes, okay? <laughs> so we're gonna try our hand at that. So far, I've done my research into regular hash brown patties, what makes them crunchy, what makes them stick together, but we've come up with a custom recipe, so hopefully it works. Watch the whole video so you know if these fall apart in the oil and are terrible. But we're gonna give it a whirl. So without further ado, don't put your cheesecloth on your body. This is for food. Okay. So before we get started, this next step is the reason why I don't make hash browns at home. Or tater tots for that matter. I hate this utensil right here. I hate it. I hate it. In the same breath, I will tell you my qualifications for teaching whoever is seeing this a recipe I've never made is it doesn't matter because it's the internet and we can do whatever we want. But secondly, um, in my late teens, early 20s, I was a prep cook for a while and I learned a lot. It wasn't the greatest job I've ever had, but I learned so much. I also learned that I hate cheese graters. Because the style of cooking that we did was a little more high-end, we we did it. Like, we went in there by hand, and we used to make these sweet potato croquettes uh, for catering and stuff like that. It's an hors d'oeuvre. It's, like it's like a fancy tater tot, basically. You can make a croquette out of anything. It's basically like shredded meat, vegetables, with breadcrumbs and fried and other things. But that's, that's another video. Anywho, we would make hors d'oeuvres for catering, which means we had to make a lot of them. So we made pounds of these sweet potato croquettes, and we had to shred all the potatoes by hand. And definitely have carpal tunnel from years of just manual labor in general. <laughs> but I would cut the shit out of my fingers. It was, I, hmm. don't want to do this. I don't want to do it right now. <laughs> but that's another reason why I have this channel. Because it's going to make me put the effort into the things I don't normally want to put effort into in order to make something delicious and hopefully share that with my friends and family. And the same goes for you too. So before we get into the recipe, you can use a food processor for this next step, but... I do recommend shredding the potatoes by hand. 
when you make hash browns, you want your potatoes to be as dry as possible before cooking and forming into whatever delicious shape you decide. <laughs> whatever delicious shape you decide. And when you use a food processor for anything, um, all of that liquid really, really kind of comes out. The pieces get too small. And it looks really pretty when you do the shredding by hand, but I digress. I am trying to sell you on something that I don't want to do right now. And I'm also procrastinating by filming this portion of the video instead of just making the gosh darn recipe. So we're going to get started. We are going to shred these potatoes by hand and relive those glory days. But it's going to make something delicious. All right. I will see you in the kind of fancy attempt at a cooking shot. So this next step is also why I don't make hash browns at home or tater tots, whatever I said. So whenever you make, even when you make your skillet hash browns or french fries at home, the best way to get them nice and crispy is to drain out all of the liquid from these. Same thing with like your fries if you leave them out on a paper towel or whatever, but we have all of these tiny little shreds in here and we need to squeeze the dickens out of them. Now, the best way to do that is with ye olde cheesecloth. If you don't have one of these, no big deal. Uh, you can always use a strainer, colander, or something of the like. Uh, you can press down on that or put like something clean and weighted on top of that and let it kind of do its own thing. It will make things go a little bit longer, but then you don't have to squeeze anything. Uh, a paper towel works as well, I've heard. And also just like a regular dishcloth is fine. These aren't that expensive, you can find them at your local grocery store, but if you don't have them, it's not a big deal. Don't buy a thing for one recipe, unless it's an ingredient that you'll use in the entire recipe. Advice, okay. You're gonna wanna grab a bowl to catch all of your excess liquid in, toss in about a handful or two, or just dump a bunch in apparently, into your cheesecloth. And you can be as picky as you like, squeeze until you think you've gotten the juice out so that these potatoes will form together into a nice patty shape. We are gonna do something fun with this juice later on. Grab another bowl to put your squeezed sweet potatoes in. Sweet potatoes. <laughs> Enunciate your sweet potatoes in the meantime. And just keep repeating until that first bowl is finished. Like I said, this batch didn't yield as much juice as I expected, so for about five sweet potatoes, maybe expect about a half a cup to three quarters of a cup of excess juice. Alright, so I have the shredded potatoes separated into two bowls because I'm gonna make two different flip four two different flavors of hash browns. We're gonna have one that's just gonna be your normal plain Jane, salt pepper, and paprika. And then in this one, I think I'd like to do curry powder potatoes with some onion powder as well, I think. Got the rest of the ingredients that we're gonna need here. All of this work amounts to this moment, just combining everything and forming them into patties. We have one egg that I beat because we're gonna split it up into two, into the two bowls, and this amount of potatoes really only calls for one egg. From what I've gathered, I don't know. Remember, we are flying by the seat of our pants. We're shorts, I'm wearing shorts. 
a third of a cup of flour, so one sixth cup in each bowl. I think we'll do, then I'll let you know how much, so <laughs> how much we put spices when we get there, because I don't know yet. So we'll do halvesies first. That's good, we've got that. One egg, then we'll do one half of this in here. So this is a sixth of a cup of flour. Sixth over here. So one third in total for four to five sweet potatoes. And then we're gonna put the same amount of salt and pepper. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Five cranks. So 10 cranks. Maybe I'll measure that out later. One, two, three, four, five. And we'll do one, two, three. Three is fine. One, two, three. I want to do paprika in both. Ah, It's new. Let's do a half a teaspoon in each. So a whole teaspoon in your regular batch. So this one over here, done. This one is gonna get some curry powder. Oh, it smells so good. We're gonna do a quarter teaspoon of curry powder. It's a very strong flavor. And another quarter teaspoon of onion powder. Gross. I don't use this a lot. Or that dot. One more. There you go. Now we're going to mix this up and form it into patties. Definitely not enough egg. So you are definitely going to want to go with two eggs for this. I'm just beating another egg. And I'll put it between the two bowls. We're not going to put this all in this one. I don't know. I need more flour too. Be all right. Give it a feel. Give it a feel in there with my clean hands. Oh yeah, that's not too bad. This seems to be good, so we're gonna form these into patties now. You can make these any size you want. I want to go for that traditional, like patty look. Let's we'll see. There we go. I don't know if I should spray this or not. Maybe I should. are gonna be our fun ones. These are the curry onion powder sweet potato hash browns. Now my hands are gonna smell, smell like curry, but that's okay. Worth it? 
worth it. Same deal. Pick them up. Put them into patties. I did add the other half of that egg to this one. I don't know. I'm a little nervous about this consistency that we've got going on, but we will surely find out. More uh, potato squish ASMR. We're just kind of forming them over here. Stay together. Well, I guess there are no less potatoes over here. So now comes the time. We have to wait some more. We're gonna have to stick these bad boys in the freezer and we're gonna freeze them overnight. All right, so we're gonna let these freeze overnight. And then we're gonna fry them up. So now comes the time when I leave you. And for you, it's only gonna be a few seconds, but for me, it's gonna be a whole night, at least. We'll see, we'll see when we actually cook these. Um, another reason I don't make tater tots at home, gotta wait, you gotta wait for them. And I just don't wanna wait for my potatoes. But the good part about freezing your creations is you can make these in a huge batch, freeze them up, and then you have them for whenever you wanna make them. <sighs> and now we have our cat. Hello. That's your butt. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was using her favorite window spot this entire time. So I'm happy that she is happy to have that back and has immediately let me know that she was waiting for it the entire video. So now we have our sweet potato juice. And I told you I would drink it. And I will drink it. And I want you to give it a shot as well. I don't think I'm gonna drink this whole thing, but cheers. Hmm, chunks of sweet potato. It's good. I mean, I wouldn't like take it to work, but it's not bad. You could honestly, you could mix this in with an iced tea. If you like juice because you're cool, you could put this in your regular juice or or green juice or something. Um. You could cook with this too. You could honestly make like, I don't know, this would be good in like a stir fry for something sweet. Right, Beans? Yeah, all right. Anyway, I will see you in the next bit when hopefully I have a taste tester and we fry up those sweet potato hash browns. I hope they don't fall apart. I'm pretty nervous that they might fall apart in the oil, but that's okay. This is a recipe that is my first time trying and we're, we're here for the ride. We are back. It's almost a week later, but I have a taste tester today, so it makes it worth the wait. We have frozen our sweet potato hash browns. They're a little more dome shaped than I would have liked, but who cares? It's the best part about making things homemade. So these ones are the regular ones, and then we have the curry paprika ones over there to try. We're just waiting for this oil to heat up and we're gonna drop them in. Good. Woohoo! Now for the moment of truth. Here we go. Ooh, that's hot. So don't crowd your pan. Three seems to be good for this one. And I think we're gonna do three to five minutes on either side. Okay, I promptly did not follow my own advice. If you could even hear it over the sizzling, uh, you're gonna wanna fry your hash browns for three to five minutes on either side. I will stick to that maybe closer to five. Keep an eye on them. If they start to darken, keep them in there for a little bit longer. I don't know if my cat just meowed over me talking right now, but I'm gonna leave it in. Anyway, basically what had happened was when I formed the patties, I did like a clam shell with my hand. Don't do that. And in this batch, you're actually, you're not going to see why in this one, but basically 
flatten your hash browns is what I'm getting at. Make sure they are flat or the same thickness all the way through. The first batch that was just there weren't cooked all the way through in the middle. This batch cooked all the way through, but it started to fall apart. I think this is the one that I added. Yeah, I added more egg to this one. So they weren't doing super hot. They were doing very hot, actually. But they started to fall apart in the oil. Um, the oil might have not been hot enough as well. The way you can test that is to throw just like a little like excess chunk of potato in and if it bubbles up immediately you're good to go. These last two held up pretty well so I don't think it was much of a problem as much of a problem with the batter as it was the temperature of the oil when I dropped the hash browns in. But that's the beauty of making things at home. You make mistakes. I know those look super burnt but they're actually cooked all the way through. So here we have it. We got four good looking ones. The curry ones didn't fare so well. Actually, let me get those too. Because... <laughs> so this is the beauty of DIY. I think because I separated those two bowls, uh, I don't think there was enough egg in this batch. Made some sriracha ketchup. We're gonna give these a try. And I do have a taste tester, if you'd like to join. Yes. <laughs> Whenever you're ready. I want to eat some hash browns. Eat some hash browns. Going with this one. Pick Is a side. You get the first choice. Is it hot? Yeah, probably. When does that stop to you? Oh, God. Yeah. Do I eat it with... No, I'm going to go plain first. No, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Mmm, rock ketchup's good though. I like them. Hell yeah! So that's it. I'm gonna make these look pretty for the internet, but you saw the real disaster that happened. If you try these at home, let me know. Anybody who comes across this video, the three people that are seeing this, give these a shot. Don't burn yourself. Don't get your hair in your food like I am right now. And see you again next time. I think they're really good. I think they need more salt.